Welcome back to Candroid Crypto. Um, okay guys, so I was talking about the last video. I said we have a new graphics card coming for the Stormtrooper case. So um, I picked this up locally. I found um, someone selling it on Facebook Marketplace. Uh, so it's another Radeon RX 580. This is a Sapphire Nitro Edition, or Nitro Special Edition, 8 gig card. So there are cards out there guys, you just, you have to, you're not going to find anything in the stores. Like you're going to have to go to Marketplace or Kijiji. Um, the person that owned this was actually nice enough to bring a PC out to the front of his house, put it in the PC, demonstrate that the card worked and all that stuff. So that when you're buying this card guys, you can be 100% sure confident that you're not forking out $600 and getting a dud card. And... So that is the price of a Radeon RX 580 around my area right now. They're all pretty much $600 used. Now I bought these two cards here over in my rig over here to the right that you can't really see on the screen. I paid $595 brand new with store warranty and everything. Um, I paid another $600 for this card today. But uh, let's open it up. It's a pretty cool looking card guys. Get her open. Also, it has it came with the box and everything. Obviously, no store receipt, but that's you know it's a used card, not a big deal. So there we go, guys. We got a. This thing is awesome. It looked awesome in this rig powered up. Um, so it's a Sapphire Nitro, and check it out. Um, the Sapphire logo here actually does light up in blue. I saw it running in his rig. It looks really, really cool. This card has an 8-pin and a 6-pin. Um, he said the 6-pin may be optional. You may only need the 8, but let's, let's kind of see what happens. And uh, there's the back of the card, guys. Looks super, super, super awesome. Nice little graphics card. So... Uh, we're going to get that in the Stormtrooper case over in the corner so that the other RX 580 has a friend. So let's get the second card in. So here we go. Uh, this is the Nitro. Sapphire Nitro. This is going to light up blue. It's going to look really, really cool. And we're hoping to get, again, another 30 mega hash, maybe a little bit more out of this card. We are going to find out. Okay, and again, before I push the card in, I want to double check all the slots, make sure everything's lined up. You can see the card is quite a bit larger, guys. It's at least another inch to inch and a half longer than the uh, standard RX 580. Okay. I'm going to clip that card in there. All right. Okay, first card's locked in place. I believe I had this one in. All right, there we go. We have our two cards locked into the chassis. And when I put this power supply in, I did it smartly where I, I put the I guess the location of the new connector that I was going to plug in, I put it here at the top. And let's drop that in now. These power supply cables are so thick, they are kind of hard to manage. Um, but like I say, it is a fully modular unit. We're going to plug it right in. Okay, so there we go. So we have one cable for a graphics card. And we have the other cable for a graphics card. So we have two cables here, two cards. This one has a splitter, so I guess we can use one. I don't know if we need both connectors on this Nitro or not. 
So one little cool thing with the nitro or with the uh, the Corsair stuff, guys, they always give you like a little bag of zip ties, um, just small little ones to help maybe do a little bit of cable management. Uh, we're going to try it here just to kind of keep some stuff out of the way and every, everything falling around here. I'm trying to, I moved this over here under the light for you guys <laughs> to give you the best kind of view. So right now we're going to try to keep that cable up and out of the way. We don't want it hitting any cards. And it still might cause some issues. Okay, that's just to get that out of the way. Alright, and let's see, we got an 8 pin and a 6 pin. I'm only going to plug in the 8 first. I just want to see if this card will actually run with just the 8. I've been told that it will, as long as you're not pushing like lots of power. Okay, 8 pin is in. And this little card here, it's not very far. We don't need too much cable. Um, this is just a 6 pin. Oh, actually, nope, that is an 8 pin as well. So uh, we're going to put in the same connector we had last time. Not a bad thing once everything's um, powered in and done. Okay, so you, you can see how stiff these cables are guys, like look at this, like they are, like y you can't even bend these cables, just the way they are, you cannot bend them. I think all I can do is just kind of, this is probably the best I can do as far as cable management. There's definitely nowhere to secure the cables to. Okay, so, yeah, this is about the best I can do, guys, as far as these cables. Like, they are just too stiff. I cannot bend them, um, but they will handle a lot of current, definitely a lot of current. And again, if we need the 6-pin on the nitro, we'll wire in the 6-pin. Okay, let me go get this powered up, and we'll come right back. All right, guys, let's power up the rig. Um, there we go. Check out that uh, blue sapphire nitro. It looks awesome. Even the fans throw off uh, green or blue color. Yeah, that looks pretty awesome, guys. Not that I'm care about glow or fancy bling stuff but uh, you know just a feature of the card so we're gonna use it all right let me get into get into hive and then I'll check back with you guys all right so here we are in my hive OS um, so this is my rig that I just put the nitro in and you can see so this is the nitro card right here. So right now, without any overclocks, um, we're running at 24.8 mega hash. Most of the most RX 580s will push 30, maybe 32 mega hash. So let's show you what settings we need to do to get this card up into that range. So the very first thing you want to do here, guys, you want to you want to pump your fan speed to 100% just to keep your card cool while we're doing the overclocks. You can see some of the the other settings for another RX 580 here. We're gonna have similar settings and what we can do, let's hop into our remote shell as well. Um, you can see these settings take effect instantly with Hive OS as we change them. Okay, there we go. There's our Hive shell, I had to scroll up. All right, uh, just, we're just gonna Say minor status. You're gonna see it's running. Oh, actually, it threw us right into the minor. Okay, probably because I typed it wrong. Um, so yeah, you can see the nitro card. It's 24.8. All right, let's go back in here. 
All right, let's go to our settings here. So this is our Nitro. It's got Micron memory, this card. And the very first thing we're going to do, we're going to set similar core speeds of 1250 for this card. So um, we're going to say 1250. We'll just do that first. You're going to see it's going to say applied. And let's see if the cards come up at all. Um, so initially it dropped, and that's what these ADI cards team to. Uh, that's what these AMD cards actually tend to do. Um, they tend to drop at first when you first apply the setting, and then they start ramping back up. Um, so yeah, check that out, guys. Look, it's already gone from 24 to 27 just by changing the core clock. I haven't done anything else with the memory clocks and you could see the immediate change on the card and there you go 27.7 so um, the next thing we want to look at so look at the power consumption here on this card it's 135 watts right now but if you compare it to the other RX 580 we're running around 107 watts this is because of this DPM setting and this is like a, I don't even know what it is it's some kind of power setting on the card so we're gonna go ahead and set that as well um, I believe it's core state index yes so we're gonna drop this down by default this is gonna go to level 5 if you see the note here in Hive OS we're gonna drop that down to level 2 we'll apply that setting and you watch immediately you're gonna see the power rating of the card come down Okay, so look at that guys look it just dropped to 99 watts see that 99 watts instantly so look over here we had 134 I'm gonna refresh come on refresh I believe it's done it hold on a second Oh, okay, it's still at 135. That's okay. We're, we're going to address that shortly. So the next thing we're going to do, we're going to set the video, uh, the VDD, and the memory. So you can take a look at this card. We have, uh, so our, we're going to adjust our core voltage, and we're going to adjust our memory clock. Okay, so let's go in. So core voltage, we're going to say 875. Now memory clock, I've already clocked this card um, I have tested it. We are actually going to go up to 2350 uh, on this card very safely, but I know it can go a little bit further, 2375. Um, anything beyond that, and the card's going to crash. So uh, let's do that. So there you go. So DPM2, 875, and 2375. And right now the card's at 27.7. So let's take a look in Hive. You can see it's dipped, 27.7. 214 now watch the card ramp up here guys 28.9 look at this look at this 32.68 like huge jump huge jump um, I this is about the max for this card I've tried to push the memory I've tried to push the memory to 2400 and the card did crash right away so 2375 is about the safest spot I'd like to go on the memory with this specific card let's do a refresh here now let's take a look okay so you can see so this cards pulling about 101 watts right now um, generally what I like to do I like to just set the power limit maybe one or two watts higher than what it's actually pulling um, this way you're actually not you're not under you're not stealing power from the card you know what I mean guys like I know I know everyone likes to try to skimp and save costs and save power the problem is, once you start undervolting the card, it can become unstable. Um, so I just kind of let the card settle in where it likes to settle in. So we're at 103. I've set it at 103. Okay, let's go into the shell. All right, so we're looking at card two here again. So you can see, look, it dipped again. Guys, look at this, 30, C30. And now look at look at it ramping right back up. Look, 32, 
33. That's what all these AMD cards do when you apply overclocks and you apply settings. Um, Hive OS is really good because it does it on the fly, which is amazing. All right, so so there you go, guys. So using these settings, um, fan speed, obviously, it again, like you can see, I have this other one at 75. Um, I try to keep them around the 50 mark. Definitely not. I try to keep them definitely below 60, and if possible, I try to keep them below the 50 mark. But I'll probably cut that in the fan a little bit. Um, we can go down to, so fan percentage, we can go down to 75 on the fan. These cards actually run really cool, surprisingly. Um, okay, so fan speed is 75. So yeah, so there you go, guys. We're still pulling 101 watts. Um, the fans, it's not going to creep much past 50, this card. But yeah, so there you go, guys. That This is what you're, if you have the Sapphire Nitro, uh, I guess special edition or whatever it is, these are the clock speeds and stuff that you can you can expect about 33 mega hash out of this card. Um, it's actually faster than my other RX 580 cards, which are running the Hynix memory. These are at 32.41, and again, I've... Um, I have them at a stable position, and uh, yeah, so this car is getting 33 mega hash, guys. All right, so thanks for tuning in. Um, like and subscribe. Hopefully, you know this video helps you if you happen to have a Sapphire Nitro card and you're trying to mine in Hive OS, and uh, yeah, you're expecting 33 mega hash, guys, on that card. All right, peace out. Happy mining, guys. See you on the next one.